How's it going everybody? Nick DiVirgilio here and this video series is called How to Make Your Drums Sound Great. Each video we're going to concentrate on one section of the drum kit. Today's video will be on the snare drum. And these videos are for the beginner, the intermediate player, but even if you are an advanced player, hopefully you'll get something useful out of these videos. Now hopefully this will help you in getting your drum sounding great because maybe you're one of those players, especially if you're new or intermediate and you don't have a huge collection of drums. I've been playing drums for a long time. I have a decent collection of snare drums, so if one's not sounding good, I can always go grab another, but you may not be in that situation. So it's good to know how to make whatever you have sound as good as it can. The kit I'm sitting behind is a Ludwig Element Evolution Kit. This is an all-in-one playing solution. You get everything you need right out of the box. I've added some nice Sabian Anthology cymbals, but you get some great Zildjian cymbals with this kit, hardware, all the way down to a pair of sticks. So everything comes in the box. The shells are nice, you get some good heads, great tom mounts and hardware. So if you're an intermediate player or you're a beginner player looking to step up to the next level of drum kit, definitely something to check out. And it's a great kit to show you how to tune and make your drum sound as good as possible. So I'm gonna grab this snare drum, go over to the table, and let's get into it. Let's get into tuning. There's a million ways to tune drums and every drummer has their own tips and tricks the way they do things. What I'm gonna show you here, you can do on any drum you have. It's pretty universal. First thing I wanna do is get these snare wires out of the way. We don't need to take them off. Just kind of get them so they don't buzz on the bottom of the head. When you get drums out of the box, especially an intermediate style kit, they don't really tighten up the bottom head on the snare drum that much. And I really prefer the bottom head to be tight and snappy. That's where you're gonna get a lot of life out of the drum and it really helps in the feel, the playability of the drum as well. Okay, I've taken the tuning down on the bottom head close to what it was when I first pulled it out of the box. kind of flappy, but I think they do it that way for shipping purposes. Now we want to get this up tight and really feeling good. So just start on one end, give it a few cranks, go diagonal, skip a lug, and really I just go for feeling here, especially with the bottom head. I'm not going for a certain pitch. You don't want to over tighten the lugs. You don't want to snap the bottom head. Bottom heads on a snare drum are super thin on purpose. So tight is good. Too tight could be a little bit bad. You might choke the drum and again, you might snap the head. So just give it a nice, so it's a feeling thing. If you go so far that you can't turn the tuning key anymore, that's definitely too far. But I gave each lug about three, four turns. Let's see what it sounds like now. It's getting sort of that timbali sound to the bottom of the head. We're getting close. Pitch from each lug should be relatively the same. And that's really all I'll do. Now when I turn the drum over, I can always make tweaks at the, on the bottom head once it's at the drum and adjust the sound as well. Next thing you wanna do is to make sure your snare wires are even. Most of the time from the factory, they'll already be put on in the right spot, but it's good to make a check. This drum is in good shape. You can see on both ends, it's about the exact same distance from the edge of the snare wire to the rim. So you know it's right in the center and you're gonna get good snare buzz all the way across the bottom of the drum. All right, now we're at the top head. Most of the time, when you get a drum right out of the box, you buy a snare drum from Sweetwater, the head's gonna be on the drum, close to where it needs to be pitch-wise. But what I want to assume now is that you're gonna change the head from scratch or putting on a brand new head so there's no tension on the drum at all. So the first thing I'll do is press in the middle of the head so you can see the wrinkles around the outside. Go to the one of the lugs, start turning my tuning key, one, maybe two turns on each side, and really I just wanna get rid of the wrinkles first. That's the first thing I wanna do. So then over to the next lug, and so on and go around the whole drum. Now, at least I know the head is on there flat. The tension is relatively the same all the way around and now I can really dial in the sound. But first, let's hear what it sounds like just to where I took it. That's not it. We have a lot of room to go. So now I'll do maybe one or two turns on each lug, skipping a lug as I go. So one, two, one, two, skip a lug, one, two. You can hear the pitch of the drum coming up just as I'm doing this. No, 
let's see where we are. We're getting there. Now the size of this drum also matters in the sound. This is a five inch drum by depth, 14 inch diameter. So higher pitch is gonna give you a nice cracking sound. You're not gonna get a huge thuddy sound because the depth is a little bit shallower. Six and a half, sevens and eights are great for the big, huge thuddy sound, but we can get close. I'll show you that in just a minute. Right now, I wanna take this up even more. I'm fine tuning now. I don't have to turn as much on each log. And you can feel the tension in your hand. You want the tension to feel the same on each lug. We'll also check the sound as well. So now, it's pretty close all the way around the drum. Pitch is higher. I won't know totally until I get it behind the kit because the resonance of all the other drums make a difference in how your snare drum sounds for sure but I think we're in a good spot. Snare wires are in place, bottom head is tight, but we can always tighten it more over there. Top head, good tension, good pitch all the way around. Now let's take it to the drum kit, see what it sounds like plain like this with nothing on it, and then I have some other implements, some other accessories to dial in and get a lot of different sounds out of this one drum. All right, the drum's back on the kit. I haven't touched it since I brought it from the table. Let's see what it sounds like at full volume. Here we go. It sounds good, it's cracking, it's high pitched, feels good under the hand. I'm gonna give a few tweaks to the bottom head. I'm just gonna grab a few of the lugs, a couple of turns. You might not think that a couple of turns on a few of the lugs on the bottom makes a difference, but it to really does. See what it sounds like? The drum has nice resonance, it's cracking, and it feels good when I do a rim shot. This is a great place to start. Now let's start finding some other sounds out of this one drum. It's great to have dampening products around with your drum. Now that means anything from moon gels to snare weight products like this right here, gaff tape, not duct tape, but gaff tape can definitely work, your wallet, there's all kinds of things you can use to dampen the drum. I really like these snare weight products right now because they're very simple. There's nothing sticky on your drums and you can just attach it to the rim, take it on and off. This is the small M1 version. I'm just gonna put it in between two lugs here. It'll deaden the drum just a little bit. Here's what it sounds like. It's taking away some of that ring. Let me take it back off. Here's it without it. Now you might like the ring in your drum. It just depends on the kind of music you're gonna be playing at the time. Sometimes when you're recording, you might want to control the ring of the snare drum, and that's when these products like the snare weight come in really handy because it doesn't take away the ring totally and make the drum dead, it just controls it just enough. Say you want to get that big deep thuddy sound, but you only have the one drum. A great accessory to do that with is the big fat snare drum. Just put it on the top of your drum and go. It's dead and thuddy, but now if you want to go even lower in pitch, a suggestion I have is to take the two lugs that are right in between your legs and tune down just those two lugs. A couple of twists on each one should do the trick. Let's see what it sounds like. Getting down there quite a bit now. Play all kinds of music where you need a big fat snare drum. cool for ballads, all kinds of stuff. It's just a really cool accessory and it's so simple. Just put it on the drum and play. So right there we have four totally different sounds out of one drum and they all sound really great, all very musical. You can do all kinds of stuff. Other ways to get this drum to sound great is to play it with different implements. Right now I have some nylon rods. Check it out.
Nice, easy on the ears. Did a little train beat right there. Play some country music, all kinds of stuff. Quite easily with these and the tuning of the snare drum. Next, some wire brushes. You can get all kinds of great sounds with wire brushes. Brushes are cool because you don't have to just play jazz. That's really cool, but you can get a great backbeat with brushes as well. You play a rim shot just like you would with sticks, hitting the plastic part and the rim at the same time and then letting the wires snap on the head nice and strong. There's many other implements that you can use for sure, but grab yourself some hot rods from D'Addario and get another great sound. The wood dowels give you a little more preciseness on the ghost notes as compared to the nylon dowels. The last couple things I want to show you here is don't forget to turn off the snare wires and play your drum with the snare wires off as well. So we went through the tuning of the drum, went through the drum with some different dampening things like the snare weight, played the drum with some different implements, played the snare with the snare wires off. Last but not least is how you hit the drum. You're gonna get all kinds of sounds and you'll make your drum sound great by the way you hit the drum. The snare drum is an instrument, you can use all of it. Sounds great right in the center with just the tip of your stick. Soft, but deep. You hear the whole resonance of the shell. Next one is hit the drum a little bit harder, but don't do a rim shot. Soft. Loud. Two totally different sounds. Now let's do a rim shot. You connect with the rim of the drum and the head of the drum and right in the middle of your stick all at the same time. Great for rock and roll. And then, to round it all out, use the edge of the drum. Do some buzzes. Let the stick bounce. Do it together, you have a buzz roll. Get creative and go in and out from the center to the edge. Just right there, I was playing at the edge of the drum, but I was using the shoulder and right at the very end, all the way up to the tip of the stick to get a different sound. You can also put the stick on the head and hit the stick. So really, you can get, you know, a ton of different sounds just by the way you hit the drum. And there you go, a little bit of tuning, a little bit of dampening, some accessories, how you hit the drum all come together to give you a great sounding snare drum. It does take some practice, but the more you do it, the better you'll get at it, and it's a lot of fun to, to hear the improvement as you go. Okay, everyone, thanks so much for hanging out with me. I'm Nick DiVirgilio. Make sure you get behind your drum kit, play drums, make music. It is so much fun. I know you'll love it. See you again next time.